welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today is Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you who celebrate. And for everyone else, I'm so sorry that everything is closed. Honestly, it annoys us too. Anyway, today we are going through some Entitled People videos. And if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first Entitled People story. This says, friend wants to use me as her backup ATM. Oh, she do, do she? <laughs> That's interesting. Next month, I, female, am going away on vacation with a longtime friend, female. We are going to the Caribbean for five nights. It is not all inclusive, so we will be responsible for paying for food, drinks, and any activities. I just feel like that's not the way to go. Like one of my favorite vacations ever, I mean, for a lot of reasons, but our honeymoon was an 11 day cruise in the Mediterranean. I had never left the country before. He had never left the country before. And here we are in freaking Italy and Greece and Croatia and Spain and France. It was amazing. But probably one of my favorite parts was all food and drink are included. I mean, not alcoholic drinks, but we're not big drinkers anyway. So we didn't, we didn't get a single drink. What I paid for was sodas cause I am a soda holic. So I did pay for like one bottle of soda or a can of soda in my room every day. And then like at like lunch and dinner, I would get a soda. But other than that, we just went to the free restaurants and the buffet and that's where we ate. And we would pay for food when we were, you know, on land during the day. But other than that, everything's included. And it was, amazing so i in the future any kind of resort or something that i go to i will be choosing all inclusive for sure and not having to worry about like oh can we afford dinner tonight no you're on vacation you don't want to have to think about affording dinner that's crazy anyway she asked me how much i was bringing in cash and i said 300 dollars cash plus debit and credit cards. She told me she is going to bring $300 cash, but no debit or credit cards. She said she is on a budget and $300 is her limit. I explained that comes around to only $60 per day, and this is not one of the cheaper Caribbean islands, so food and drink alone won't leave her that much left over. I reminded her that she needs to factor in cabs, incidentals, or any activities we may decide to do, and you never know if an emergency will come up where she will need money. She says to me, that is why I have you and starts to laugh. Listen, this is something that I would expect from my little, little sister, okay? And even then I'd like pop her nose, metaphorically, uh, for relying on me for all her money. But like, no, this is little, little sister energy. That pissed me off to no end. I tell her that we are both adults who are responsible for our own selves. It would be one thing if she lost her purse and needed money. I would float her money before she even had time to ask but to purposely use me as her backup ATM is not going to work. I told her now that I know what she is up to, I'm not going to go along with it. If she runs out of money, she will just be asked out and hungry. She needs to bring her cards with her for her own good. So like she has debit and credit cards. She's just choosing not to bring them because she's entitled to your hard earned money. Right. <laughs> She is now telling me I am too harsh and she will bring extra money, but no cards. I told her to do what she wants, but if there is there an emerg if there is an emergency, she is on her own. Wow. So like, I just don't think a vacation on an expensive Caribbean island is where you go to budget. And, and, I, and I mean, sure, you want to say, well, this is all I'm spending every day. Okay, yeah, that's great. But this is not exactly like you're going to a casino and you're like, okay, I'm not bringing my debit card because I'm not gonna take out any more money. Like, I don't care what the situation is. I'm not gonna do it. That's one thing. But like this OP is saying, what if there's an emergency? What if you're like stranded somewhere and you need like an emergency cab? Like you're just gonna not be able to do this in a foreign country. Not the place to put a limitation on your spending as far as bringing like emergency money with you. Make zero sense. However, y'all, we have an update. Entitled friend is at it again, vacation with no credit cards. I hope you're ready. 
because I'm ready. Several months ago, I posted about my friend Z planning to go on vacation without taking any credit or debit cards with the intent of using me as her backup ATM. One of her friends later told me that I was mean and stingy in how I handled it. I'm sorry, mean and stingy because her spending isn't your responsibility. If she had every good intention of bringing money and cards and everything with her and there was still an emergency that she couldn't afford, this friend already said that she would do everything in her power to like front her the money before she even had to ask for it. But this bitch is literally coming on vacation going, yeah, I'm gonna bring $300 and if I run out, well, there's you and your pocketbook, so I'll be fine. Ma'am, I did not birth you. I am not responsible for you. Z is now going on a Christmas cruise with a group of her friends. Her cabin mate, the same one who told me that I was mean and stingy, just texted me about Z's plan to only bring cash, no credit or debit cards for their upcoming cruise. Since the cruise is all inclusive, including unlimited drinking packages, Z feels she can get away with it this time. The cabin mate wants to know what did I do to get Z to bring a credit card on my vacation with her? Oh, so since the tables have turned, you don't want to be beholden to this freeloading entitled friend. Funny how that happens. Like, so interesting. I never laughed so hard in my life and I haven't answered her yet. Yeah, bitch, figure it out on your, on your own because I'm so mean and stingy that I'm not even going to give out advice for free. I want to respect, respond, don't be so mean and stingy, lol, but I'm electing to stay out of it. Just wanted to share that update. Thank you, OP, for the share because it's just the cherry on this beautiful, ridiculous Sunday. I cannot imagine a grown person being so freaking entitled to another grown person's money. Ma'am, if you are not fucking me or funding me, <laughs> And if I did not birth you myself or, you know, sign papers to adopt you, you know, whatever, y'all get what I mean. If you are not my responsibility, then you are not my responsibility. End of freaking story. I would like to know what you think about that entitled, so well, those two, that, that double header for today in the comments and let's get on to the next one. This says, am I wrong to confront stepmom for stealing from me and my daughter for her addictions? So I guess this is technically an am I the a-hole, but people told her to cross post to entitled people. So this is like right up our alley, y'all. Let's get into it. Am I the a-hole to confront my stepmom for stealing from my daughter for her addictions? Hello, I posted this elsewhere earlier, but I'm trying to reach a larger number of people because I'm really screwed right now and I need some suggestions, advice, directions, anything. And hopefully someone that can tell me what I do might see this because the devastation I feel is debilitating to the point of paralysis. <sighs> Yo, addicts will just use and use and take and take and take. And not only is their substance part of their disease, but using and abusing is a part of their disease. And it's not an explanation, it's not an excuse. Like at some point, at some point you don't have any control over your addiction, but there are other points when where you do have control and then you are, you know, making that conscious choice to continue um, or to not get help or to not accept help. But man, it's just no freaking good. Anyway, I'm so upset, my hands are shaking right now and my mind is racing, so please try to stay with me. I've never posted on Reddit because before, but I read these a lot and people are always accusing posters of lying. So I try to include a pic of the list I'll be taking about, talking about in the hopes that we can skip that part in the comments, but this community wouldn't allow an attachment. A little backstory, my daughter 12 and I, 30, 32 female, were finally able to leave her father about a year ago. And I'd been actively trying to, since the day I found out I was pregnant. He started as my college boyfriend and became increasingly controlling and extremely violent with me. And it took over a decade to get out. The only reason I was able to leave with Without him interfering this time is because the law is involved and he is facing serious jail time for a suspended sentence if he contacts me within the next 10 years. I moved back to my hometown to be closer to my family. He had moved us to his hometown after college, probably to isolate me, but I haven't had the greatest relationship with them either. My mom passed away when I was two and my dad remarried a year later. That's quick. 
My stepdad had a t- my stepmom had a 10 year old son at the time, and from ages four to 10, he abused me in every way. When I finally told my dad and stepmom about it, their reaction was disappointing to say the least. They really didn't do anything about it because he was leaving the house for college. So I guess they thought that was a fine resolution. Is this screaming dugger to anyone else? <sighs> protect your kids, man. Protect your freaking kids at all fucking costs. I don't care who it is that is perpetrating against them. Protect them. So when I left for college, I pretty much never looked back. When they found out I was pregnant, they tried to reach out to make amends so that their granddaughter could be in their lives. But I resisted really until we moved back to our hometown last year. I have no contact with my stepbrother, but my dad and stepmother have been really making an effort where my daughter is concerned. And the more people that she has that love her, the better, I guess, since she's completely lost her dad's side. (sighs) I've said that same thing so many times. Like I love when other people love my babies because... That just means like the more people in the world that love them, the more people that there are to take care of them and to look out for them. And that's so important to me, but like, damn man, she's gonna regret that according to the title. Anyway, last weekend was one of my cousin's birthday and the family was all at my aunt's house for the get together. I was talking to one of my cousins about what we each had coming up this week. I told her that I was trying to figure out when I'd be able to get all the supplies my daughter needs for her Girl Scouts camping trip this weekend. I have my master's, but I had worked in about nine years for reasons that I now understand were just about control and financial abuse. So the jobs I have now are not great. I work two jobs and my only shift off is the morning, but I don't want to wait till the last minute to get everything. What if I couldn't find everything in just a few hours? And also my daughter has anxiety and hates leaving things to the last minute. It kills me that she thinks I'm always putting off getting what she needs, but I'm not procrastinating. I just don't have the money in advance and have to wait till I make it to be able to buy things. We found out about the camping trip about three weeks ago and the timing freaking sucks because obviously Christmas is also coming up and all the things on the list I figured out will cost me about $250. No worries though, there's literally not a thing that I wouldn't do for my daughter and I'd already signed up for OT for Christmas, so I just added some more hours to be able to get the supplies as well. My stepmother heard me saying how I didn't know when I could fit fit this shopping trip in my schedule, so she came over and volunteered to help me out with it. Fucking bitch. I hesitated because she's obviously not my favorite person in the world and my cousin was even kind of laughing because she knows I don't like her, but I eventually agreed. My daughter needs these things and I didn't want to jeopardize her getting what she needs just because of my feelings. So stepmother was like, I'm retired. I have all the time in the world this week. Just give me the list and I'll get it done, blah, blah. Also, I knew that this was going to require me spending a lot of time walking around Walmart. I have lupus extreme joint pains from my toes to my neck and my ex broke my tailbone and my back in two places so it's really difficult and painful for me to walk around that hard floor for long periods of time so the next day sunday i went over to their house and gave her the 200 250 dollars plus 30 dollars for a beginner crochet kit that my daughter really wants for christmas We talked about the list. I told her the sizes I needed for the sweater sets that I picked out, just gave her the details that she needs. So I didn't hear anything from her that day, but I worked both jobs and I was busy. Plus I wasn't expecting her to go out and get everything that day, so it was whatever. Monday though, she let me know that she'd come down with a cold and probably wasn't going to get to it until Tuesday. I've been texting her all week and she's been saying that she's not feeling well, but she will get to it as soon as she can. Y'all, we all know where this is heading. So today when I would have been able to do it myself, There is a teacher's work day on Monday, so they are going Saturday through Monday. I wanted to go by last night to just pick up the money so I could take care of it myself today. I call and text a bunch of times and no answer. Finally, I call my dad and ask him if he can grab the money from her so I can pick it up. He didn't know what I was talking about, so I briefly explained and he said he will call me back. He didn't call me or answer my text last night and just came over to my house this morning. He just dropped on me that my my stepmother has been addicted to painkillers and gambling for the past 10 years. He said he didn't know anything about me giving her any money or he wouldn't have let me do it, but that money is definitely gone. Can you imagine being that much of a fucking shit person that you would literally take money from your granddaughter? I can't. (sighs) He said that no one in the family knows and asked me to please not say anything. He told me about the problems this has been causing their marriage and a lot of things they've been going through. Really? You want to buy my silence? It's going to cost you $280. 
I'm sympathetic to drug use slash addiction. I was a bartender for years and really lived that life. If you know, you know. But since the day I found out I was pregnant, I haven't even had a drink. I've been completely sober. It's easy when you have no friends and only work. My life is essentially my daughter's. Like I said, I do empathize with the situation, but what the fuck am I supposed to do now? They're supposed to leave tonight for camping and now I can't get any of the supplies. I've just been sitting here stunned and crying since he left. She has been looking so forward to this trip. It's not been the easiest for her to switch schools in a different state and make new friends, but she's been really enjoying Girl Scouts. I put her in it because I was in it when I was young and was also able to find friendship there. I don't have anything she could use around here. We were not a camping family. The last time I went camping was when... I went to the Girl Scouts. She's like me, grew like a weed till middle school and will probably be this size probably for the rest of her life. But the point is none of her colder weather clothes from last year fit at all. I was literally starting from scratch on this list and now I'm about to have to tell her that I that she can't go. This is breaking my heart for the both of them because this mom is just trying so hard to keep her head above water and this daughter is trying so hard to just be a kid and this fucking bitch just swooped in, inserted her grimy fucking ass into their situation and stole her fucking link. Oh, can you just fucking imagine how low you have to sink to do this to somebody? Like, I feel like that alone would put me in a rehab. Like the fact that I would have the fucking audacity to treat someone like this, I would put myself in rehab. And why can't she go? I've been working so much extra and she knows why. So I tell her I essentially just gave the money away. Like what the hell? I literally feel like I'm gonna puke. Tell your fucking father to give you that money back. <laughs> I wanna call my dad and tell him that I'm sorry about what they're going through, but I need that money back and he needs to get it for me ASAP. Would that be too selfish? <laughs> No, honey, it's, start, it's time to start acting a little more selfish, in my opinion. I know he doesn't have it anyway. He assured me that he'd give it to me if he did while he was here. This just fucking sucks, and I really want to comfort my confront my stepmother about this. I don't want to act like I don't know and just let it go. She just really hurt my daughter, and I don't take that lightly. So am I the a-hole if I confront her since my dad asked me not to? I think y'all all know how I fucking feel about this situation already. That stepmother, I would call the cops. You have a witness that you were giving her that money. I would call the fucking police right away. There is an update. Let's cross our fingers and hope that there's even a glimmer of good news because my heart is breaking on this Christmas Eve. <laughs> I called every family member and just let them know I'm having an emergency and asked to borrow some money. I've never asked anyone to borrow money before. It was literally miserable and none of them can help me. I wasn't really even expecting it since it's so close to the holidays. My ex worked hard to cut off all of my friendships so I have no one else in my life to ask for help. I had just about $300 from when I would first started saving for Christmas. So now I'm running around like a maniac trying to get this list done with that and I guess I'll be praying for a miracle in the next week. All of the physical and mental pain that my ex put me through feels like something else entirely than this. I can't believe this is happening. My daughter has been through so much and she doesn't deserve this. Honey, neither do you. Nothing for Christmas, but I don't have time to figure anything else out. It feels surreal. I'm trying to get all this done before they leave, but I saw people asking for updates. Thank you everyone for your responses. I'll have more time to write back if or when I get this completed and start figuring how the fuck to still have a Christmas. Update two, is there anything that I can do here? Is there a work, a way to like legally force someone to pay you back even if they say they can't? I'm just spiraling here. I've done everything I could for my daughter. I had the money and just handed it to someone else. I essentially gave away her Christmas. Is there anything I can do? I call the fucking cops. I'd call the fucking cops and at the very least I'd say, she's an addict, you should search her house. She's stealing pills. Make some shit up, I don't give a shit. I'm sure there's something illegal in that house if she's that much of an addict. No, I would take that bitch down with every dirty, petty trick I had in the book because she would deserve every single tiny little bit of it. And if the cops didn't find anything, I would watch and wait like a fucking hawk until she stepped one grimy, disgusting, nasty bitch toe out of line. And then I'd call the cops again. Yo, I'm pissed and we haven't done this in a while, but go ahead and bring them in. Because what kind of fucking terrible loser monster treats anyone this way, let alone a little fucking kid? 
Y'all, I feel like I'm gonna cry. <laughs> These hormones are too much for me to handle. I would like to know what you think in the comments about that bullshit story, but I need to move on. I hope this mom figured it out. I think getting your daughter on this trip is probably more important than Christmas at this time. She's kind of old enough that you could say, hey honey, you know what? We're doing Christmas in February. I'm sorry, but you know, I'm gonna send you on this trip because that's time sensitive, but we are gonna have to postpone Christmas a little bit. I know it's not ideal, but I'll do the best I can. I feel like she would understand that. I hope she can find some way to get this bitch back because she deserves all the fucking revenge in the world. And I'm about to put the story in petty revenge and figure something out for her. Anyway, let me know what you think. Let's get on to the next story. This says hospital employee tries to kick me out of the family waiting room. Entitled people story. Okay, let's see what it says. A few months ago, my dad was admitted to the hospital and later transferred to the rehab unit. I was coming to the hospital every day to check on him and make sure he was eating properly. And if any of the nurses or doctors had questions or information they needed, I could quickly answer it for them. I was also working, so I set up camp in the family room, which is open to all family members of patients. There was a small desk in the corner of the room. I set my laptop there and worked. Then after my shift ended, I would go back to my dad's room and spend time with him until visiting hours ended. The family room is usually empty during the daytime. I have my headphones on and worked quietly. If another family member does come in, I let them know they can turn the TV on and not to worry about me. My headphones drown out the noise and I know it is a shared room. One day while working, three nurses walk in and see me. One of them says, what are you doing here? We want this room. Sure, please use the big table or any other space you want. I'm a family member and was told I can use this room. I'm just using this small desk and don't worry about me. Noises won't bother me. She says, no, I want you to leave. We want the whole room. Ma'am, are you a fucking family member? I say, no, this is a shared room. We can, you can do what you need to here. I am not leaving, but more than happy to share. She huffs and leaves and the other two look embarrassed as they should be. A few minutes later, another woman walks in and questions why I'm working out of there and I should give up the room to the three nurses. I ask her, where should I go? I was told this room is for family members and I'm free to work out of it. She looks annoyed and says, did you tell them you are a family member and not staff? Yep, I told them I was a family member. She then apologized and said, you have first rights to this room as a family member and they should know better than to ask you to leave. They can't kick you out. I will go and talk to them and tell them they have to find another room. Okay, thank you, but I am still willing to share as I don't mind others in the room. She smiled and left and I never saw those three nurses again in the rest of the two weeks I was there. Bitch, I am a family member and my fucking, which means my fucking family is in this hospital and your bitch ass is gonna walk in and tell me I have to leave the fucking family waiting room? I think the fuck not. I'm sure there is a conference room or an extra something in this goddamn hospital that you can use for your own purposes. You dumbass bitch. Okay. Y'all, this entitled people really got to me on like a personal level. <laughs> this is not the Merry Christmas that I think y'all should have, but you know what? If you're feeling like getting some of them feels out, enjoy this video. <laughs> Let me know which entitled story was your favorite in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of over 20 or 25 entitled people videos up here that you could binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.